I'm Richard Clark. Ramana Maharshi's teachings are deep and profound. Listen each day to deepen your practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 510. Maharshi, when a person wakes up from sleep, the head is raised and there's the light of awareness. This light was already there in the heart, which is later reflected on the brain and appears as consciousness. But this is not particularized until a hand car steps in. In the undifferentiated state, it is cosmic, cosmic mind or cosmic consciousness. This state lasts usually for a minute interval and passes off unnoticed. It becomes particularized or differentiated by the intrusion of the ego and the person says, I. This is always associated with an entity. Here, the body. So the body is identified as I, and all else follows. When a person wakes up from sleep, the light of awareness becomes apparent. Sri Ramana Maharshi explains that this awareness was always present in the heart, not the physical heart, but the spiritual heart from which awareness and being rise. But it is not noticed until it is reflected onto the brain, where it appears as consciousness. This consciousness, however, is not immediately individualized. In the very first moments after waking, it exists in an undifferentiated state, which could be described as cosmic consciousness. This is pure awareness, untouched by the sense of I or ego. To use modern terms, before the ego boots up. You might wonder why we don't recognize this cosmic state more often. Maharshi points out that this cosmic state is very brief, usually lasting only about a minute, and passes unnoticed because of the intrusion of the ego or ahankar. The moment the ego steps in, it claims the consciousness as itself, as I, and associates consciousness with the body. This is where the shift happens. Consciousness that was once pure and universal becomes individualized and limited. Some are able, when they awaken, to stop and notice before the ego steps in. This is a great practice if you can do it. In practical terms, when you wake up and think, I'm awake, what's really happening is the ego is claiming awareness and identifying it with the body. The pure consciousness, which was briefly cosmic, it's reduced to a personal experience of I am this body. The Maharshi teaches that the process of identification is the root of all suffering. The mind, driven by the ego, starts labeling everything based on this I thought, leading to desires, fears, and attachments. These are all built on the mistaken belief that the body is who you are. But Ramana invites you to inquire, who am I really? 
through self-inquiry, you can begin to peel away this false identification with the body and ego. When the ego dissolves, the true nature of consciousness as universal and unbound by individual limitations is revealed. This is the self, your true nature, always present beneath the surface, but often overlooked by the working of the mind. By recognizing that the I you assume to be yourself is a creation of the ego, you can shift your focus back to the awareness that exists before the ego steps in. This is the essence of Ramana Maharshi's teachings and the path to realizing the self. Ramana recommended self-inquiry as a practice to do this. So know yourself and be always free and at peace. In 40 verses on reality, Ramana Maharshi explains the nature of the self, the ultimate reality, and self-inquiry. My new book, with my comments and inquiry questions, opens these teachings up and brings them into your practice and experience. Available now from Amazon. Link in the video description. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with the comments.